Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting Trees of Color. I'm going to be sipping a little Chardonnay. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. So the materials that we're going to be using today is a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores and you can also switch up the size, but I'm going to be using 16 by 20. Uh, you're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You're going to need two brushes. This is a one inch wide bristle brush and this is just a number two uh, round brush. You can of course switch these up a little bit too, but those are the ones I'm going to be using. You'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And we're going to be using acrylic paint today. The colors I'm going to be using is a titanium white. This is a chrome yellow. This is a burnt sienna. I've got violet purple. This is a phthalo blue. This is a phthalo green. This is fire red. And then this is a Mars black. And of course, again, you can switch up these colors if you'd like, but those are the ones that I'm using, and that is all we're gonna need for materials today. All right, so the first step what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using your bristle brush. We're gonna be doing the sky, which is gonna come about halfway down your canvas. The three colors that we're gonna be using is the burnt sienna, we'll be using the chrome yellow and the white. So I'm gonna start with both the burnt sienna and the yellow on my brush at the same time. So I've scooped up both colors, and I'm gonna be starting at the top of my canvas. I'm gonna be using a left to right motion. Um, what's gonna happen is I want my sky to get a little bit lighter as it's coming down my canvas. So at some point I'm gonna start introducing white because I, I want to have a big bright sun area. So right now I'm still just using um, the chrome yellow and the rust and I'm coming down. As you can see, I'm almost starting to um, stay away from that center area just because I do want it to be lighter than the rest. Um, I am also going to paint the edges or the sides of my canvas as I go. That way my painting looks nice and complete. Um, but again, I'm still just using the, the burnt sienna and the yellow as I go along. I know that I want to come about halfway down, so at some point I just kind of mark it so I visually don't go any further than that. I'm getting my edges to be a little bit darker so you can see then, I, then I'm going to get that center area to be. So you can see I'm just kind of um, coming around these sides with the yellow and the rusty color here. And I'm pulling those colors in so I don't have a real firm line in through there. And maybe I'll just bring a little bit down in through here. And now that I've got a pretty good exterior um, for this sun setting sky, I'm going to start to introduce my white paint to it. So again, I didn't wash my brush. Um, I want these colors to look like they belong together and they're merging together. So as I start introducing the white, you can see that I'm, bl I'm blending it in towards these um, side colors. And I'm probably even going to go back up to the top of the canvas and do another little layer on that as well, just so it looks nice and full and doesn't look like I only put one layer on it because sometimes with these acrylic paints just doing one layer almost makes it look a little unfinished um, because they are pretty translucent and um, the more layers that you have on them the more they're going to look nice and complete. I'm going back up top to make this a little bit darker at this point so I just added more of the burnt sienna on there and because I want this to be a nice rich color and it was a little bit too streaky for me so I'm just adding a little bit more of that rust color and maybe I'll go back and add a little more yellow. This is again just visually a ple pleasing to you. You don't have to, you could make it certainly darker or lighter than I'm making it. This is just um, the way that I like it to look and again I still have that area that I want to go in through the center um, but now that I know that I just put some additional paint on my brush I'm trying to work off um, a lot of that dark color off of my brush so when I do go into the center I've got a pretty crisp white going on in through here 
and again this is a sunset so you can really have these colors to be as light or as dark as you want them um, I do want my sun to be pretty bright so I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel so I'm going back into that white and again sometimes um, you do need the multiple layers so if you don't get this as bright as you want it on this shot uh, what I'm going to end up doing is in a little while once it dries a bit I'll make my sun even brighter um, but I'm just kind of adding these colors around it to give it to make it pop out a little bit more so you can see I'm continuing to build up these yellows and the rust color just to make that contrast more evident and to get that sun to pop out a little bit more because the darker it is around the sun the brighter that sun is going to look so again right now I'm just adding a little bit more of this rust color up here and you can see my sun is starting to really just pop right out of the canvas here and when you feel like you're all set um, we are going to use this brush for the next step um, but I do recommend that you wash it and dry it but I'm going to just kind of keep working at this for another minute here so I get it just the way that I want it and I mentioned that I was going to go back and add a little bit more to that sun so I'm going to do that in just a second here I want to make sure I've got a nice smooth color all around here and you can get these I, I'm really just using a light like almost like a feather touch to get these colors to just blend nicely into one another and also by doing this what I'm doing is I'm thinning out the paint which means it's going to dry really fast for me and that allows me to build those layers right on top of one another because once the acrylic dries you can certainly just add another layer right on top of it so right now I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel again and I totally just dropped my other brush which I'm gonna to have to pick up in a second um, but now I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that white and I'm gonna get my my center sun to be nice and bright and through here and again you can get it super super bright or you can leave it on the duller side but once I get that in there if it's not as bright as I imagined it to be what I can do to make it look even brighter is I can take those other colors and almost go right around it because that's going to again make it pop out even more when you have that higher contrast of colors right next to it. But I like my sun to be nice and soft looking, so I will definitely blend this out a little bit so it's not too dramatic. And then again, once you're all set with this, you're gonna take that um, bristle brush and wash it and dry it in preparation for your next step. All right, so the next step what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the water area down below so we're going to be using the same colors which is the rust yellow and white only this time we're not going to start with the dark colors we're going to start with the light colors so i'm going to be doing the entire water area from left to right and i'm going to keep it more choppy looking than i have the sky so i'm actually going to start with white I'm going to start maybe about an inch or so away from where I have um, my skyline and I'm just going to start going left to right back and forth. I'm going to do this for a little while. I want my brightest area to be below my sun. Now I just added yellow to my brush and I'm going to start to work this out. So I'm still going left to right. I just picked up a little bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. The idea here is you want this to look like it's a reflection of the sky. So I'm still using yellow and right, excuse me, yellow and white right now. Um, so at some point I'm going to start introducing the burnt sienna. So I just touched it onto my brush right now. And again, I'm not washing my brush throughout this process. I am just allowing these colors to kind of blend in with one another. I am going to hit the edges or the sides of my canvas as I go. And if you have a really, you know, if your left side is really light or um, whatever the case may be, you want to kind of emulate whatever colors you're seeing in the sky. So if your sun was over to the left, then your brightest spot would be over to the left and 
you would just mimic whatever you're seeing in the sky down into the water. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can really have this um, kind of like a, a really painterly style as you're going through it. Um, more of a rough, maybe ripply water kind of effect as opposed to the really smooth look. So again, I'm just kind of almost skirting my brush left to right. As I get down into the bottom, I do want it to be pretty dark because that's gonna emulate what my sky is doing. And you can see I'm kind of skipping around here. That's gonna give it a, a more natural look to me and it's gonna allow it to really emulate more water, that it's water as opposed to the sky. And this would will probably go by a little bit faster, the, um, this step a little bit faster than you do in the sky, only because right now you don't really have to concentrate on getting that perfectly highlighted center area for the sky. You've already got this nice bright area that we started right from the get-go, um, and now you're just adding the, the colors that you see in the sky in a similar order. So I'm almost done here, and you probably won't even need two coats, you know, just I'm using a pretty heavy amount of paint so that way it allows me to just kind of keep working as it's drying um, because when it's wet, when you use a lot of paint, it will uh, stay wet a little bit longer. But what I really do want to make sure I do is cover the entire canvas. So right now I'm just checking for unpainted spots right now. I know I'm going to want to get that edge over there. So I'm just making sure I get all of these painted in here. And then I am going to use uh, this same brush for the next step. So after you get this area as light and as bright as you want it, and you feel like you've emulated a pretty good color pattern on here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash and dry that bristle brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be using the bristle brush. We're gonna be using black paint only, and we're gonna be doing the black band of land in the center of this painting. So I have a couple of tricks to doing a semi-straight line without using a ruler. Um, and I'm also using this big brush, so it inherently will have, um, you know, get a little out of control for you. So one of my tips is to take your brush and you squish it in the side of your paint on your palette. And that's gonna bring your bristles into a controllable um, way. And I'm using a good amount of paint here, so that in addition will help me. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two dots on either side of my canvas, where we're gonna be working on the top line right now. I need this line to be all within my sky. So I see that this is my highest point right here. So I'm just gonna go over to the right and I'm gonna make a dot similar in height to that. And then I'm gonna use my brush for a ruler. So I can take my brush and I can put it right up against the side of my canvas and I can say, oh, okay, well this dot is just a little bit further than the top of my uh, brush. So I'm gonna come over onto this side and I'm gonna put my brush in a similar spot. I'm leaving a little bit of room up there just because I know that that's what happened on there. I'm gonna put my finger right here and then I will make a dot in the same spot. So now I know that these are pretty much at the same height from one another. And then I have a good amount of paint on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get this in one swooping motion. Um, if I run out of paint, then I'll get more paint, but my tip is to keep your eye on the prize. So if I'm gonna start here, I'm constantly checking that my brush is heading towards that dot. And if I, same thing, if I'm gonna start on the right, I'm constantly checking to make sure it's headed towards this dot right here. Um, so I'm just gonna start deciding which, start, which uh, side I'm gonna start on. It looks like I'm gonna start on the left. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm constantly watching where my, where my line is going. If you want to, you can stop at some point and start from that end, but I'm just gonna kinda keep going here. And I feel like I'm dropping a little bit low, so I'm gonna go up higher. I know that I'm totally dropping, so that's going to be my line. And you can see I dropped down here, so what I can do is I can just go right now and make a couple of corrections here. 
I can even start at this side and work my way back towards the left. Whatever works for you for these corrections is totally fine. And then to me, that's gonna be good enough. This is land, so I'm not terribly concerned about it being a perfectly straight line. Um, I am gonna check this though, because it looks like one of them might be higher, but that probably just my, so to me, this side looks higher, but in essence, this side is higher. So it might just be a visual um, illusion to me because there's more white space here, but you can certainly tweak it as you go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want my band to be maybe about an inch or two wide. So I'm just gonna work from this line. You could do another couple of dots if you wanted to, um, or you could just start painting in. Now that you've got a semi-straight line, you could just start painting in with your wide brush and just continuing to make this line wider until you've got it as wide as you want. Again, you need to make sure it's all within that's within your sky and the bottom part of your line has to be within your water because you don't want any vacant canvas um, when this is all said and done. You want the whole canvas to have paint on it. And if you go through wet paint, some wet um, water area, like right now I just went through a little bit wet white paint, it's totally fine. It's only gonna add to the, the color variations in your land, which totally works. And then I'm gonna wrap that little band around the side. And again, I don't want this to be too, too wide um, because I don't want the band to be the total focal point of this. I really am more concerned about the trees being nice and bright and having them be the, the focal point of this. So once I get it all nice and set, and again, it does not have to be perfect because this is land. So you can tweak it as you want. I feel like that's a little bit wide, but that's all right. And then we are going to be switching brushes to that small brush. So after you get done getting this as straight or as bumpy as you want, I've had some of my students do this painting and do all kinds of like little hills in there and stuff. So this is totally um, whatever you envision it to be. And then I'm gonna put my big brush away in my water cup and I'm gonna take out my small brush, dry it off on my paper towel and get ready for the next step. All right, so the next step we're gonna be doing is gonna be with your small round brush. We're gonna be using black paint only and I'm gonna be doing the tree trunks and the branches um, on the top part of my canvas. So I'm gonna be using black paint. Uh, one of the tips for Getting your brush to be nice and pointy is you're gonna take it and you spin it in the side of your palette within your paint and that should get it nice and pointy for you. Um, I am gonna be doing six trees, but you could do 12 trees or two trees or however many you want. Um, the idea here is to watch out for your sun. So you want that sun to be visible um, at the end of this. So don't put a tree trunk right in front of it whereby you'd put a tree top in front of it. So. Um, I'm going to just start over on the right hand side and this one's going to be kind of a tall one So I just am doing like a little straight line. I'm going to have a couple of branches coming off of it and These are imaginary trees. You can really have fun with them um, You can make them to be really cartoon-esque or illustration kind of trees you can make them to be really lively trees. Um, this one here is eventually not gonna have any um, leaves on it, so I'm gonna focus more on the branches for this particular one that I'm doing right now. And when I do these, especially the branches, I'm not really pressing hard on my brush, so that way um, I can really just get a nice clean little skinny line, but you could certainly um, if you want yours to be wider or whatever. I'm noticing that I'm kind of in where my tree is gonna be, so I think I'm gonna put another tree over here, or my son. I, I wanted to put a tree here, but I went too wide with those, so I'm gonna put a little tree over here, and that's gonna be a different tree that, I will, that I'll work on later. And then over on the left side of the tree, 
or the, the left side. I don't know why I'm calling the sun a tree because it does not look like a tree. Um, the sun, I'm going to be putting a little one over here. And again, these branches, you're going to be putting a lot of leaves and stuff on the tops of the trees. So you don't have to spend too much time on these branches. Just something that you're going to be able to see underneath um, the branch or underneath your treetop later. So it doesn't have to be um, super perfect or anything like that. I'm going to do a little tiny, like wider stumped one down here. And then maybe I'm going to have a nice tall one going in through here. And again, these branches are not super important because you're going to have the treetop that's going to um, be the focal point of it. And once I'm all set with that, I am going to be using this brush for the next step along with black paint. So you just maybe you should take a sip and just get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be doing the reflection of the tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint only. And this part, uh, you gotta kind of reverse your brain a little bit. The only trick here is that you want the tree trunk to start maybe about an inch away from your land. So that way it just looks like it's a reflection in the water. And if these don't turn out Perfect, that's okay because they're in the water. They could be ripply or whatever. Um, you also wanna make sure that you keep the same height orientation. So if this one's shorter, the reflection should be shorter and so on and so on. But when it comes to like your branches and stuff, they really don't have to um, be an exact replica. I can guarantee not many people are gonna notice if they're exactly the same or not, but if you have them kind of close you you know you can fool some people um, but again they don't have to be um, it's the reverse action here of getting these branches is a little bit tricky and I just made this one the wrong way but that's all right who's to know right just just you and me um, and then I'm gonna do this one in through here and that just bodes to um, me telling you that they don't have to be perfect. Um, just as long as you have a similar shape, uh, maybe a couple of similar branches, then that will, that will work fine. But going reverse like this is not the easiest feat to do. So you could even, if you wanted to have fun, you could make these reflections look totally different than the tree up top and that would, that would um, play well with people because they would wonder why they weren't the same. Um, I actually have done that with this painting several times, which is kind of fun. Uh, but again, I'm just kind of watching what's going on up there and making them kind of similar if I can, but if I, if I miss out, no worries because as long as it's kind of similar, you'll be fine. But my biggest thing is I'm staying away from um, the land's edge here. So that way I can, um, it's even hard for me to talk while I'm reversing these. There's, they're, they're tough to get in the opposite direction and watch them as you go along. So here I go, I'm gonna do, this one's got a little bit of a curve here. And we've got one coming off of here. Boy, I'm, I think this is one of the ones that I'm concentrating the most on while I'm doing this, just so I can get it a little similar. That's close, I guess. Close enough. All right, that's an extra one, but I won't add one up top because I told you it was okay, so. And then this one's gonna be an easy one, right? So there we go. All right, so I think they look pretty similar. This one's kind of a little jaggy, but you know, that's all right. So then I'm going to, we're gonna switch brushes back to the large brush after this step. So you'll put the small brush in your water cup and you'll wash and dry the big brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be using the bristle brush. We're gonna be using black paint only and we're making the first layer of the leaves on your trees. So I'm gonna be using a dab, dabbing or dotting technique. I'm gonna be using black paint only 
and we're going to be doing the top and the bottom so you can um, get the same shape. So for this one here, I'm going to make this one look a little like a Tuscan tree maybe. So this has this long diamond kind of shape and I'm just dotting it in. And then what I'm going to do so I don't forget what I've done on that one, I'm going to come right down here and I'm going to emulate the same shape and just dot it in. It doesn't have to be dotted in 100%, um, just enough so it, you know, it has a full like shadowed base to it. This one I'm going to do kind of like a horseshoe at the bottom. I do want my um, branches to kind of connect to those leaves and then I'll do this one in like just a big kind of circle top and then I'm just dotting in this black paint and as you can see you can still kind of see through it a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing here and again kind of keep if you can that size ratio from the top one to the bottom one. This one is going to go off of my canvas because it's much taller than this one and I've um, not left it enough room so I'm just going to paint it off the canvas which is totally fine. This one I'm not putting any branches on because I want that to be a naked tree. And then this one, oops, I got a little bristle that's going to get in my way here. So this one I'm going to do pretty similar shape to that one. And then I'm just dotting in with black and I'm going to stay away from my sun because I definitely want my sun to be a predominant piece here. And then I'm going to come down below. I'm going to do the same thing, make it look pretty similar in shape. And then just dot it in. This tree, I'm not getting very creative here, but that's all right. I'm going to do a similar shape. Another kind of ball tree here. It'll look way more interesting when we put all the colors on it later. I'm going to do the same thing down here. And this one might touch the bottom of my canvas, which is totally fine. Getting those branches to connect so they look like they belong together. And then this one I'm going to do another little like Tuscan kind of tree here. That tall diamond shape. And then I'll do the same thing down here. And then in preparation for the next step, we are going to use this big brush once again. Um, but I do recommend you wait for your canvas to dry before we go on to the next step because you want these treetops to be dry for the next step. So you can just wash and dry this big brush and sit and relax or you can blow dry it or I just recommend relaxing and waiting for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're going to be putting the color on the tops of your trees. And you can, of course, do whatever color that you'd like. Um, I'm going to be doing a multitude of colors, but the trick here is you're going to do it. It's like a two step process. So I'm going to put the color on each tree, the dark color, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to highlight them with white paint. So for me, I'm going to take my big brush, I'm taking red paint, and I want the lightest side to be the side where the, the sun is. So I'm going to take pretty heavy red paint, and I'm dotting my, my tree, and I'm doing it less paint over on the left side and more paint on the right side. And you can even overlap that, um, the black area on the right side because that's going to make it look even brighter towards that sun. So here I go, I'm dotting, 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 and over towards that left side, again, I'm using less paint and less pressure. So now I want to do another color, so I'm going to go into a purple tree. I'm just going to kind of quickly rinse my brush here. It doesn't have to be totally clean um, because purple is a pretty complementary color. So I have purple on my brush right now, and you're not going to be able to see it a whole ton because it's on top of black at this point. Um, but once I put the highlight with the white on there, it will definitely start to become more vibrant. And again, as I get towards this left side, I'm using less pressure and less paint, so that way I have more paint on that right-hand side. I'm gonna um, wash my brush real quick again because I'm gonna switch colors right now. I'm gonna go into my blue 
color here. So now that I'm on this side of my canvas, I want the bright side to be on the left side. So I'm gonna take my blue and I'm going past my black a little bit on the left hand side and I'm dotting, dotting, dotting. Um, and as I get over towards that right side, I'm doing less pressure and less paint. So that way that right side is eventually gonna be the darkest. And then I'm gonna do one more color switch here. So I'm quickly washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna go into the uh, green color that I've chosen. And again, I'm going on the left side of the tree, which is gonna be my bright side, dotting, dotting, dotting. And then as I get towards the right side, I'm using less pressure and less paint. And then I'm gonna, um, I guess I could just reverse so I don't have to wash my brush at this point. I wanna put the highlight now. So I'm still on the green. I didn't wash my brush. I'm just picking up white paint and I'm going to add a highlight or white paint to that left side, which is where the sun is. And you can see I'm wiping off my brush at this point. And I'm just going to lightly dab that white paint over towards the right side. But again, I'm using less pressure as I get towards that right side. So it almost blends or fades into the right side. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush real quick again to go into my blue tree. I don't need to add more blue to my brush because I've used enough paint, it's still wet. I'm just touching it into white paint. And now I'm gonna put that white over on the left side of the tree. And then I'm gonna continue dabbing as I go towards the right, only this time I'm, I'm gonna be using less pressure and less paint. And if it still remains too white, like that feels too white to me, I just picked up a little bit more blue because I want it to kind of fade into darker and if it's still really bright, like you've got a lot of white on your brush, you can certainly just pick up some of that original color and go um, get it darker on that side. So now I just have two more colors left to do. So again, I'm just quickly washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna do my red ones. I pick up some white paint. I'm gonna put white on the right because the sun is over there. I'm gonna put white on the right. I can do these two trees at the same time because they're the same color. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm lightly dabbing these from the right to the left, keeping it darker on that left-hand side. And same thing with this, just dabbing it lightly to get it to fade into the dark side. And now I just have my purple one to go. So I washed and dried my brush one more time and I put white on my brush for my purple one. So I'm putting the white on the right side and now I'm just lightly dabbing it to get it to go into the dark side over here. And then once you feel like you've got this accomplished, we're going, we have um, one more step left to go and it's gonna be with that small brush. So when you're all set with this, you're gonna put this big brush in your water cup and you'll take out your small brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're going to be highlighting the land and the trees. We're gonna be using mostly yellow, but you'll probably use a little bit of white as well. So I'm using my small brush. I'm going to take yellow paint and I'm just gonna be going back and forth, left to right, if you wanted to, I suppose you could use some of that um, burnt sienna as well, but I'm just doing this to add just a little bit of brightness on this land to you know, give it a little bit more um, substance and, and dimension here. Um, I've just used yellow. I'm gonna touch just a little bit of white in through here just to get a little bit more. And if you run into issues where you feel like you've put it, made it too, too bright, um, you can certainly bring back some of the black um, and know that it will dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet anyways. And I think I've gone a little bit too bright there, so I'm just gonna add a touch of black onto here. Um, and again, you can certainly tweak this to however bright or dark you want it. And then once you have this done, we're going to, I'll show you how to highlight the trees. Um, I'm gonna be using the same brush and I'm gonna be highlighting the side that is towards the sun. So I'm gonna give you a little bit closer look on this first one so you can see what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about. So 
I'm going to be going on the right side. I have yellow and white on my brush right now, and I'm just really kind of doing this little bit of a highlight over on the right side of the tree. And if you have branches that you feel like you want to have a little bit of a highlight on, you can certainly go for it. I also want to bring this tree into my land. So I just bring this highlight right down into the land. And then what I can do is I can take a touch of black and do the dark side of the tree. So now I have a tree that comes right into my land. So I'm gonna go on to the next tree. Again, I'm just using yellow and white on my brush for the highlight part. And I'm gonna go down that right side of the tree. And it's okay if you overlap into the sky a little bit. And then what I do is I bring it right into my land. And then if I need to come back and put a little bit of black over onto the left side to indicate that it's there, that's great. Um, and then I'm just gonna continue this process for all of them. So right now I'm going onto that last tree over here. I'm putting a highlight on the right hand side. And then if I needed to, I could bring more onto the left side, but because I don't have much highlight in my land, over here, I don't really need to um, bring any black back. So I'm gonna go over onto these trees over on the right, which are gonna have the highlight on the left side of them. And then I'm gonna bring that right into my land. And again, if I needed to, I could bring some black onto the dark side of the tree down in the, on the ground, but you might not need to. Oh, that's a pretty bright highlight take some of that away so it's not too too bright and then I'm gonna again if you wanted to go into the other branches you certainly could that's however much detail you want to put into it is fine by me because this is your painting and again I'm just gonna go do these little highlights over here I have a lot of white on my brush at this point which is all right and then I'm going to just kind of modify it to whatever way I like. Bring that down there. Bring this on the left hand side because that's the side where the sun is. And then again, you can certainly tweak it to whatever visually looks good to you. And then let's see, I can take a little bit of that away. And the beautiful thing about art is you get to make it look whatever way you want it. So you could have had 50 trees in here instead of my six. So you just make it whatever way looks good to you. And then we do have that step that is part of every single painting to do after this is done. So when you're all set with getting your highlights on your trees and on your land, you can um, wash and dry your small brush in preparation for the final step of every painting. All right, so the last step to every good painting is to sign it. So I'm going to be, always I sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. So today I'm gonna to be signing mine in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using black paint only. You can do your initials, you can do the date, you can do your mom's name, I don't care. You can sign it, whatever, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I'm just using black paint. Some people like it to be subtle. Some people like it to be very bold. So um, for me, I'm just using black paint. And that's gonna do it for this afternoon or evening of painting. Um, I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting with you again sometime.